Okay, this is a video to explain some of the data and some of the imagery you can get just by going online from the surface of Mars. It's to explain some of the other pictures you can perhaps, might be able to find of what is an extraordinary story posted by the Sun newspaper that a space enthusiast has found a gorilla on the surface of Mars. Now, there is a famous quote, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So let's see if we can find any evidence that would infer this story is actually true. This story first appeared, as far as I can find, in November of 2005 on a forum called the MarsRoverBlog.com. A chap said, I think, you know, this looks like a gorilla on the horizon here. A couple of years later, there's a YouTube video by MarsRocks999, that's his channel on YouTube, and he just zooms in and out of this picture and he's colorized it to make it look slightly Martian. Um, and again, it's the same picture with the gorilla sat there on the rim of a nearby crater. March 2010, the Sun newspaper pick it up with a quote by um, apparent space enthusiast Nigel Cooper saying that this is definitely a creature of some sort. And now Yahoo News have syndicated it in India saying that NASA has revealed a picture which infers that NASA have only just released this picture. Something I'll explain isn't true in a moment. Now, I can see why someone could look at this and think, that looks like a gorilla. In fact, this picture does look like a gorilla. It looks a lot like a gorilla, sat there, looking off towards the left, perhaps looking towards us a little bit. You can see its back legs, you can see its front legs. It all makes sense. But perhaps it only looks like a gorilla. What other pictures can we find? What better data can we find? Look at the rover tracks here. Where are they going? The rover tracks lead to where the rover is now. They're coming from somewhere that looks to be closer to the gorilla. So perhaps there are better pictures of this gorilla, so we can better identify what it actually is. Now, I've been following these Mars rovers for six years. I recognize this area of Spirit's exploration fairly quickly, and using a tool called Midnight Mars Browser, which you can download for free. It's a piece of free software written by Michael Howard, PC or Mac. It will download all quarter of a million pictures taken by the two rovers and then put them back into 3D space so you get the mosaics all kind of projected in 3D for you. So here I am zooming into that one picture. It was taken on Sol 87 of Spirit's mission. This is 87 Martian days. And there's the route that the rover took overlaid back on top of the picture. And now we can put the rover on top of that as well, a model of the rover, and you can see that the rover does indeed head back roughly towards this gorilla. In fact, very close towards this gorilla. How close did it actually get? This is the question. Not only that, but winding back time even further to many days before this picture was taken, we can see the rover off exploring to the left here. So the rover must have arrived at the gorilla from the left, explored around that area, and then driven towards the location where this famous picture was taken from. We can now move within Midnight Mars Browser to see all the pictures taken on or around Sol 82, about a week earlier. And you can see a big panorama here. That blue line is where the rover explored after this point. So now we're showing time forwards, and the rover is driving down this slope towards the point where the famous picture was taken from. Now, if that's where the rover was when the picture was taken, perhaps the gorilla is just off to the right from this field of view. Let's pan across, and there's quite a large rock right in the middle there. You can zoom into that rock a little bit. It certainly doesn't look like a gorilla from this point of view. And that's a pretty big full-frame picture of that rock. And here's wider-angle pictures taken another few days before as well. The rover sat here for a while, and we can see more rover tracks going right past this thing. The question is, can we reliably identify that rock as the same rock, or gorilla, as seen in the later pictures. Well, you can download every picture taken by the Mars rovers. You can go to marsrovers.jpl.nasa.gov, bottom right hand corner there, all raw images. You get a menu like this, you can identify which camera you want to look through, which day of the mission you want to see, and you can see Sol 2185, there were six pictures taken by the navigation camera there. Let's wind back 2,090 some odd souls. These are the pictures taken on Sol 87. And notice they're all in pairs. There's matching pairs every single time. The reason they're matching pairs is because all the cameras 
are in pairs. They have a left camera and a right camera in every set, so that they, like us, can interpret between the left camera and the right camera to infer depth, to infer a third dimension into a flat picture. So here we have the view from the left eye, gorilla sat there on the horizon, and there's the view from the right eye. It's a slightly different view. Now we know how far apart those cameras are. We know their field of view. We know the resolution of the chips that are inside them. So using some fairly basic algebra, some fairly basic trigonometry, we can actually measure the distance from the rover to the rock. And once we've done that, we can infer the resolution of the camera at that distance and measure the size of the rock. Then we can do that again from where the rover was previously, compare those measurements and see if in fact measuring similar dimensions from these two locations gives similar sizes. If they are, perhaps it's the same rock. So using a tool, you don't have to do the trigonometry, there's a tool called Algolromancer PG. Google it, you can download it, and all it says is give me a, a pair of stereo pictures. So there is the stereo pair of pictures. You can zoom in and notice I've put little pink crosses on the two pictures. I've told the program that the feature underneath those two pink crosses is the same point. And by doing the trigonometry, it said to me, right, that is 20.48 meters away, plus or minus about 1.7 meters, something like that. Let's just do another set. Two more features co-registered on the same feature, just off to the side there. And that's saying it's 20.9 meters, plus or minus 1.8 meters. So we have a fairly reliable measurement that this thing's about 20, 21 meters away. And at that distance, the resolution of the camera is about 1.7 centimeters per pixel. That means we can measure the thing. We can measure how many pixels long each part is. So along the back of the gorilla, we've got a distance of about 51 centimeters. The hind leg, if you will, is about 29 centimetres, and from its left ear down to the ground is about 53 centimetres. These are within an area of uncertainty, perhaps plus or minus 3 or 4 centimetres. Let's look at the picture from up close and do the same trick. We can measure the height of what would, I suggest, be the hind leg that comes out as 30 centimetres. The distance from the back of the neck down to the, the back of the, 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 the kind of the spine of this thing, 50 centimetres. And from the top down to the ground, about 52 centimetres. So here we have the three dimensions drawn on top of the rock from both different views. A, B and C, I've called them. There they are marked there. A, B and C on the right. Notice we're looking at it essentially from a little bit behind the perspective of how you would draw A, B, and C as a plane through this rock. The measurements we get from the close picture are very, very similar indeed. I would suggest far too similar to be a coincidence. Not only do we have this picture, we have lots and lots of pictures of the same thing. Here we are approaching it in a colour picture calibrated by a guy called Dan Crotty. This is Sol 72, March 17th. Sol 74, March 19th, a little bit closer. Sol 75, we're kind of behind it. The view of the infamous picture is from down that slope there. March 22nd, another two days later, we've now come around just to the other side of the rock, Sol 77. The bright feature in the distance is actually the discarded parachute of the lander. Here's an amazing high-resolution colour picture taken with PanCam, again calibrated by Dan Crosser. You can see the features of the rock, you can see the soil around it. This is certainly not a gorilla, and we can fairly reliably say this is the same rock, that if you look at it from 20 metres down a slope with a wider angle camera, looks like this. Just slightly to the right of this feature, you park the rover there, you get a completely different view. So, seen from orbit, believe it or not, from orbit around Mars with the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, we can zoom out using Google Earth. There's about the right location. Has Nigel Cooper found possibly the most extraordinary piece of science in all of history? Or has he just fallen foul of a very common, very explicable trait of the human mind to infer features onto things when they aren't really there? Just because a rock looks like a gorilla doesn't mean a rock is a gorilla. All that rock really is, is a rock 
about 50 centimeters tall on the rim of a crater on the surface of Mars.